Mande speaking on the uh, benefit that uh, his department has got, an extra five billion, I'm told. Well, uh, is that going to be enough for the students? Well, uh, the South African Students Congress uh, National Executive Member, Joyce Peary, joins us now in our studio. Thank you very much for joining us. So, I mean, there was, uh, Praveen actually got a clap. He insisted on getting a clap for, for uh, Minister Blades and Zamande for this extra five billion. Uh, are you happy? Um, absolutely not. As a South African Student Congress, we are clear that although there's a five billion increase, it is actually a meaningless increase when you look at the actual substantive issues we're trying to um, um, sort of um, um, remedy. The minister speaks of um, a, a need to skill the nation, focusing on the TVET sector as an important um, way of alleviating our problems in, in society as general, increasing our economic participation. But those are all theoretical articulations. When you look at the financial allocation versus the other articulations made by the minister, there's actually a shortfall. Mm. He is speaking one language but walking another. Mm. He has told us that he is committed to education. The articulations state that we ought to increase the funding, we ought to scale our nations. But five billion, which mm. isn't even allocated for this particular year, is not going to solve the problem. Secondly, the minister also speaks of how the missing middle and the poorest of the poor have been accommodated of in the current financial year. This is not true. We are told that there's money that has been given to this particular constituency, but on the ground, the picture is very different. Mm. Students are being rejected on NASFIS, and we see that um, students who are in missing middle backgrounds are actually not benefiting from that particular grant that they've spoken to. So we hear of money, mm. but we are yet to see this money. So we're absolutely not satisfied. Lastly, there's an increase in the NASFIS loan. We are not looking for a loan. What we're looking for is free education. NASFIS ought to be a grant for the poor and not a, 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 a loan that we're giving to the poor. We're not actually alleviating the problem altogether. It, incre increasing the loan of the poorest of the poor is not actually solving the economic problems that we have currently. You're actually putting the poorest of the poor in a further debt trap once they graduate. You're not solving but, but anything altogether. The, but where will the money come from? That's a very interesting question. The minister speaks of um, multi-corporate nations, um, um, corp corporations, who have tax avoidance tendencies. What we need to see, the minister telling us, is how is going to retrieve that particular tax that they're actually avoiding? We've seen that there was um, a, a massive scandal around the financial se sector mm. and what they've called corporate collusion, which is actually corporate corruption. Mm. So there's a lot of co um, corrupt practices in the private and the public sector, some which he can actually intervene directly in. And they're going to tell us that there's no money, but there is money. And you are not actually taking initiative to take on the money. You're increasing personal taxation, sin tax, but you're not going after big businesses intentionally. You're not going after big businesses hard enough. And it's a lack of commitment, mm -hmm. and it's a slap in our face. And as this particular sector, we're not satisfied. The minister has basically told us that he's not committed mm -hmm. to the realization of free quality education for the poor, well, uh, missing middle, or the majority at large. Isn't part of the problem finding a sustainable uh, model for, for NESFAS and other funding projects? Um, and that one of the challenges South Africa faces is that it's trying to fund everybody, but not everybody should be at university. Okay, first of all, when we begin to discuss, for an example, um, shouldn't we find a sustainable way? We're trying mm. to actually deviate from the actual commitment. We need to realize that skilling our nation is the solution to the, to the problems that we actually have. If we're speaking of de-racializing the economy, if we're mm. speaking of increasing participation of youth, if we're speaking of actually changing the economic composition of the nation, we need certain skills. Those skills, where are these skills going to come from if we don't educate our youth? So the radical transformation that was spoken of or that's being presented by the finance minister is in fact nowhere to be found. He's found wanting. And as an organization, we are, not, we are nowhere close to being satisfied with the submissions he's made. He has shown that he is not committed to our sector and in essence he has failed us. What about those students that are failing and are actually then squeezing funds out of the system that can't be recovered? When you speak of students who are failing, we'll ask you for statistical um, 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 account of who, are who students mm. are failing. The reality is that students do get enrolled into institutes of high learning, but you find that a student who has gotten into, into uh, institute of high learning on NASA, for an example, does not have accommodation, does not have textbooks, does not have the necessary equipment required to succeed. So if you give us five billion, in relation to all the other issues and limitations we already have in the sector, you're not reflecting on an actual commitment. In fact, you're setting up the very student for failure. So you can say, look, they're not committed to the, the very task of being skilled. We want to be educated. We want to be skilled because we want to contribute to the economy at large. Mm -hmm. But there's actually no commitment or a political will or decisive commitment. The course for free education, 
what is so difficult about getting one's free education? We're seeing so many scandals after scandals, some of which the Minister of Finance has presided over, and we're seeing no solutions, we're seeing no decisive, bold moves by the relevant departments in retrieving the funds of the nation. The money is there. We're no longer interested in the conversation of where we're going to get the money. We're not interested in the conversation of how are we going to make better use of the money, because the money is actually there. As you retrieve the money, as you target um, um, large corporates, how are you going to put the money to good use? Five billion in relation to the, to the broader sector is nowhere close to being enough. Do you know how much enough. you need? I do not know exactly how much I need, mm. but the finance minister has definitely given us a shortfall of what we need. That five billion is nowhere close to, to what we need. And, and a simple um, note of that is that uh, the relief, there was 37 billion inserted in the previous year, and that, uh, apologies, 36 mm. billion, that was insufficient. So how do you think that at 37, uh, 36 billion, which is insufficient in the previous year, will be sufficient if we only increase by 5 billion in the following year. There's no mathematical consistency in that particular presentation altogether. So there is actually no commitment to moving us forward altogether. And we're being told of a midterm vision gradually across the next three years. It shows no appreciation of the fact that there will be increments in these years and that the, the actual cost of educating a, a learner or a, any person who enters the space is increasing by the year. But you're yet you have put 5 billion more, but yet 36 billion was not enough in the previous year. So w why do you think there's this uh, intransigence or this lethargy? Because uh, this is what you're painting the picture. Why are they just being difficult? Or are there things that you're not considering? Why are they being difficult is a question that they must answer, but our position is clear. As students, we are going to continue to advocate for free education, for the poor in particular, and for all in general, once we reach a particular state where we can accommodate that. Um, the what, where, hows, whether it is um, a lack of political will, whether it's an incompetent minister, which we as us could think that the, the issue here at hand is the minister in question. The minister is questionable, and his commitment to transformation in, in our country, particularly on the poor, is found wanting. So as to why that is his particular position, it's for him to decipher mm. and it's for him to tell us. But as an organization, we are nowhere near being impressed with the position he's brought forward. And um, we are not going to sit back and accept his failures. Um, and if there is a lack of commitment to financing our, 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 our education, we will take the matters to the street, we will take the matters to our hands, and we will not take this lying down. It is not a matter of saying, oh, well, they have, they've, they've given us five billion, it's insufficient, and life is going to continue as is. Okay, Joe Superior, thank you very much indeed for articulating your view uh, very well. I think everybody understands uh, the students, uh, please, and uh, we'll see what happens next. Thank you so, so much for coming through.